Hey everybody, this is Alchemisted, and this is once again Star Trek Online Rise of the Red Shirt. So yeah, I, I said I'd talk about stuff that the stuff that was good about New Romulus, but before I started, uh, <sighs> yeah, before I started, I wanted to uh, show off some of the awful awfulness that happened. So um, I'm at Tier Two Romulan Reputation. Uh, Tier 2 Romulan Reputation gives you, uh, you get, it's like Deus Ex. Each time you level up in Reputation, uh, you get an option between one of two perks. Uh, the, the Romulan perks for Tier 1 and 2, uh, kind of lame. Uh, you get your, the decision between Enhanced Personal Shield Capacity, uh, or, or, like, uh, more skill points for Shield Capacity, basically. I hate that guy, uh, or uh, or like increased like a three percent critical hit chance increase for like ground and space. Uh, for ground, if you use a lot of automatic weapons, that's probably pretty cool. For space, though, unless you're an escort, you're probably just better off taking like the shield capacity. Even though uh, I was at uh, ten thousand one hundred shield capacity when I took the uh, shield capacity upgrade, now I'm at like ten thousand seven hundred afterwards. It's not that big a boost. Uh, uh, but uh, like uh, the the space critical chance, unless you're an escort and use a lot of cannon weapons, and the reason for that is. Uh, the game calculates critical chance per bullet, for lack of a better term, rather than per per volley. So if you're in an escort and you use cannon rapid fire a lot, and you're fire you're just filling space with projectiles, each and every one of those projectiles has their own chance to crit. So that's what the pl that's what that's what probably what precision is probably going to be really good for is escort pilots. Other than that, just go with, you know, shield capacity for space. Unless you're a Vesta pilot, and, you know, unless you, like, you bought the Vesta, and uh, you're digging your science, your auxiliary cannons as a science officer, and uh, you want to have the same difference in that case. You're using cannons, you're using cannon rapid fire, go ahead and take precision. But for uh, lots of cruisers and lots of science ships that uh, generally specialize in beam arrays and beam banks, uh, a plus three crit chance, it's not really m very much. It's not really worth worth the F. It's, it's not really worth it. So just take the shield capacity. So, uh, yeah, enhanced personal shields... But, uh, like, like, it took me, like, a, like, a week, like, a week, week and a half to get to, uh, nearly two weeks to get to Tier 2, Romulan Rep, uh, and, uh, wow, so, there are two things that I want to talk about here, and, uh, the first thing I want to talk about are the cutscenes. Uh, now, the cutscenes in this game... Spoiler alert! Spoiler alert! Okay? I'm going to be showing one of the cutscenes. I'm going to be showing the cutscenes for, like, Tier 2 Romulan Rep. Uh, and I'm going to be showing the cutscenes for when you first beam down to Malrihan. So, spoiler alert! If you don't want this spoiled, I will specify a, uh, a time position in the video in the description where you could skip over all the spoilery stuff and go straight to Rise of the Red Shirt proper. So I'm going to put that there. Uh, if you don't want anything spoiled for, for Morihan or New Romulus, as the less cool kids are set calling it, uh, look in the description. Look for that timestamp. All right? All right. So one of the first things I'm going to talk about are the, uh, the arrival cutscenes. Uh, and, and, and the, uh, the story cutscenes. Now, when you first arrive on Malrehan, you're given this cutscene that's really cool. Uh, it's, it's really cool. It, it, you have, a. Uh, by the way, if you want to skip it, now's the time. Skip it now, because I'm about to get spoilery. Your la this is your last fucking chance. This is your last effing chance. 
Okay. So, when you first arrive on Mal Rihan, there's a uh, cut scene where Detan is talking to Obasek. And uh, they're, ta they're conversing about settling this new colony. Obasek wants to take a more military-ish turn, whereas uh, uh, Detan wants to have... Uh, wants to be a bit more peaceful about it. Uh, Obasek generally agrees, though, that Detan's the, if anybody's going to lead the Romulans into a new era of prosperity, Detan's their guy. You know, he, he's the one who can do this. So he beams away. Uh, while this is going on, they're having this conversation in the foreground, and uh, probably one of the cool things is your character arrives in the background, and uh, they move up to talk to uh, one of the aides before conversing with, Ob with not Obasek, Detan directly. That's a really cool moment uh, in this game. That's something that really they don't do very much. Uh, and they and the two, and your character and Detan, hold this conversation uh, as they walk up to the staging area. And uh, eventually they bow to each other, Detan departs. The problem with this is... And, uh, this thing, the problem with it is, it takes place in the social zone, so while things are different, you still have tons of players running around doing stupid shit. Um, you know, I and my character ended up bowing respectfully to some pervy player's char player avatar's double Z's instead of Detan, uh, when I first beamed down to Maul Rehan on Holodeck. So, the cutscene is... So, because it takes place in the middle of a crowded social zone, the cutscene is very clunky. The cutscene is very, 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 very weird. Uh, because, again, you have players, like, jumping around, using their fog... Using their fire extinguishers to fog everywhere, having, you know, dancing, doing really weird shit, and it really robs the scene of the drama they clearly intended for it to have. Um, but they wanted to show your character arriving on New Romulus, as the less cool kids call it, and uh, conversing with the local Romulans and directly speaking to Detan. This is continuing, this is literally the second, what's going on with Maul Rehan is it is literally the second half of Cloaked Intentions. So they want, so they want uh, you connected to this plot. They want, they want you to be, not just to be like uh, Captain, Federation Captain number 732 on New Romulus. They want you to be directly connected to this plot because the, uh, they have... In the time since, you know, it, it sort of began with cloaked intentions, and then uh, they, it carried through to the 2800, and finally it's coming through in New Romulus, is they have shifted the story from being basically just a scattershot M a series of, M of, ye of bog standard MMO assign you know, MMO quests, as they were before, um, bog standard side quests into a more personal story about your captain. So they want your character directly participating in supporting Mul Rihan. That's a good thing. That's a very good thing. Uh, but they had to, but so they 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 wanted this cutscene to show your character. That was probably one of the things foremost on their mind, is they wanted your character interacting with Detan. They wanted the player interacting with Detan through that avatar. Uh, you can't do that in a pre-rendered cutscene, so it's in, all rendered in engine, and it's all rendered in the social zone. And again, this social zone is incredibly cramped. It's incredibly, well, not cramped, but it's incredibly crowded. Everybody who's a vice admiral suddenly gets the, gets the orders to come here. So, that cutscene doesn't work very well because of the craziness that's frequently going on. It sucks, but I don't see how they could do that differently. Um, uh, it sucks, but I don't know where they could change that. I don't know, I don't see how or where they could fix that. Um, if they could pull a hack like they did uh, uh, like they did with uh, Doomsday Device where they had like a chunk of a ground map somewhere and then they beam you to that uh, for the cutscene for the first time you go to Morihan, that would be fine. 
Uh, but then you, you, it would feel like you were like loading somewhere you had already been. So I don't know. Uh, that's probably the way, that's probably the way. That's probably a better way to do it. But then again, you wouldn't have you wouldn't see the expansive map that you do when you first beam down. So again, I don't know how they'd fix that. They would have to basically uh, make like a massive chunk of the Mal Rehan map just for that cutscene. So I, I, I'm not sure, and they'd have to make it accessible from space, like they did uh, in uh, Doom's Day Device. I don't know how they do that. Uh, I don't I don't know how they do that at all. It's entirely up to yeah, it's it is what it is. So, I, uh, that cutscene is clunky and weird, but I understand. Uh, I understand why they've done it the way they have. What I don't understand is when it comes to the story cutscenes. Now, as you progress th through the tiers, you're, are, you're given access to cutscenes that convey the story and missions um, that carry you through it. And uh, the cutscenes, for some reason, are rendered in-engine. Uh, they're rendered in engine, like under the social zone. The first one is the first one is like literally in this room that's under the social zone. If you tested it on Tribble when it was first put on Tribble, you could actually see the room on the map that's low that that they put under the social zone. Um, you could see it on the map, <laughs> and. Uh, And it's directly under the staging area, you know, under the under the geometry of the staging area is this room, uh, where you see where the first cutscene takes place. The problem with that, uh, well, the problem with rendering in engine in the middle of a massive social zone is it doesn't render properly, or it does it, or it takes so long to render that it just looks goofy. And uh, some of the character motions can be janky because there's so many players running uh, overhead. You know, there are so many things that can go wrong with these story cutscenes. The second one is better, but it still has its issues, and I'll show you them. But uh, it's really janky, and you know, the the thing that I'm wondering is why aren't these cutscenes pre-rendered? You know, like the general story cutscenes. The cutscenes you want, you're putting in like the, a major social zone. If you're showing a cutscene in a major social area, and your character, the character, the player character, is not a participant in it at all, isn't even seen, then why isn't that cutscene pre-rendered? Because it should be. You know, you can you can use the game engine to pre-render it, but it, it should be pre-rendered. You, you pre-rendered. You, you know, you should just make it into like a bank file or something that plays once you like look at this rock on the ground to collect the the hidden data cache. And uh, I I don't know why they haven't done that because it just looks goofy. You know, ha like watching this cutscene load in like that. You know, th this should not B, you know, you don't see the player's ship. You don't see the player at all. You know, the, uh, this is no, this is almost nothing to do with the player. So why isn't that pre-rendered? Uh, and again with the second cutscene, and I'll show and I'll show you it in a second. Uh, you've probably been hearing like this little mumbling in the background. That's because I've had the sound turned down. That is actually like this radio tower transmission from this Tal Shiar dude that plays constantly throughout the Mountain Pass map. And uh, he play it plays constantly. There's no way to shut it up. And it gets kind of annoying after a while. That's why I have the volume turned all the way down because he's loud and he's irritating. Uh, so... Sounds almost like somebody you know, doesn't it? But anyways, uh, it play. There's a cutscene towards the end, and it uh, it plays constantly during the cutscene. It plays constantly, constantly during the cutscene. I don't understand what the hell. You know, it's why why am I hearing this guy talking 
during like this like recording constantly, and he's he's not a participant in the cutscene. He's just spouting random dialogue constantly in the background, you know, like he does for the entirety of the mission. It's really weird. And then this Herogen walks up, and he actually, and uh, he actually his the subtitles are different from what he says. Like, you'll see him. At some point, he'll, like, say, like, they're targeting us with lance weapons or something, and that is nowhere near what he's talking about, and it's completely out of context for the conversation he's having with the, with the Tal Shi'ar. And, uh, it, it's... Again, none of these... Th you wouldn't have to worry about, like, dialogue tags and stuff if you pre-rendered the fucking cutscene. Like, I know, you can render it in engine. That's cool, but just because you can render a cutscene in engine doesn't always mean that you should. Like, pre-rendered cutscenes existed, have existed in RPGs for ever. They, they, they've existed in RPGs for a very long time, and uh, you go back to, like, Final Fantasy VIII. You know, that's not even the longest they've been around. But, like, Final Fantasy VII, VIII had a lot of pre-rendered FMVs. And uh, the, those existed for more than just Flash. Uh, they were an effective way to convey the story through this cinematic sequence. You know, without having to, without having to worry about all the little bugs and glitches that could happen if they tried to do this complicated thing in-engine. So... That is that is a very valuable tool to convey plot, especially if the character is no in no way involved with the goings on. Just because you can make something an engine doesn't always mean that you have to. Likewise, just because you can just uh, because you can pre-render something doesn't always mean that it's better to do that. It, it always comes down to your. It always comes down to judgment on whether something should be pre-rendered or not. But. Uh, uh, in a, at least my opinion, these should be pre-rendered. Like the cutscene before with Detan, with uh, Detan, um, in the staging area. Not the not not in the staging area, but I mean the like the hidden data cache that you find there, and the cutscene that takes place in the mountains that that ha is so janky should be pre-rendered. And uh, if you don't believe me, here it is. The will be well I have visited Tyrant for the third and final time, Commander. He still worships the Vulcan's memory. He will not see reason. He is only one man, however. If misfortune were to befall him, perhaps his replacement would be more accommodating. I have no interest in making martyrs, Sub-Commander. Attacking Detan directly would be yet another distraction from the real issues on this world. In this case, some assistance may be required. You understand the situation. Detan and his people are intractable. I need you to show them the error of their ways. I don't need someone like you to explain things. Do you remember our agreement? Continue to assist us, and you'll have your pick of the hunting grounds. Intruders, defend the your best way. and most powerful trophies will be yours. They're preparing to fire lance weapons! Of course. It is done. Starfleet and the Klingons will be our prey. Once they are gone, Titan and his followers will be yours to command. And we're back. So yeah, that's my spiel about the cutscenes. That, that's my that's my uh, that's my that's my that's the weirdness that I've been encountering. And again, sorry if I spoiled anything for you, but I told you what was coming. And if you didn't like skip to uh, the dial, if you didn't skip to after the spoilers, that's your own damn fault. So, uh, the reason why I'm still here, uh, this is the Tier 2 uh, mi story mission map. The reason why I'm still here is because it took me at least about two weeks, almost, to get to this, and it's borked. 
Uh, this mission's pretty borked hardcore. Uh, in fact, it's not glitchy. It's not like super buggy at all. What what it is is that the mission is is in a is in an unwinnable state. Uh, so I have to kill, I have to like el like uh, the subdue Talshiar agents. Um, subdue Talshiar agents. Now I'm assuming that the subdue Talshiar agents is referring to like the uh, the sort of like mid bosses that were in this area before. You had like this Herogen and this uh, like Romulan commander N something commander Nehru or something. Um, uh, you you had these guys, and I assume that's what subdue Talshiar agents meant. Uh, you know, it should not... I'm pretty sure that that objective should have cleared the moment I fought all the dudes that were here. Because otherwise, I've completed all the objectives. Um, but it doesn't clear. It doesn't clear uh, if you... if you take them down. And uh, people have been... Uh, like there, there are forum topics where people have been reporting it. Like, hey, this, this, the objective won't clear. You know, this isn't working. So it's not just me. Um, so yeah, just giving you a heads up. If you were really looking forward to that tier two mission, which I was, um, and uh, it's been, it's a lot better than the tier one so far. You know, it's a lot better than tier one. But again, I'm I am disappointed because I, I I ground Romulan reputation for two fucking weeks, and I get here, you know, before I got like Rom level tier one Romulan rep, and the mission was over too quick. It was like half a mission. I get to tier two Romulan reputation, and the mission is in an unwinnable state. The mission's broken. What the what what the fuck? I I ah, ah deep hurting Jesus. So that's it. That that's all for the negatives. That's all for the negativity. Ah. Uh, that's that's all for the negativity, and um, we will now continue with the uh, rise of the red shirt. Everybody, this is Alchemist, and this is once again Star Trek Online: Rise of the Red Shirt, and we are finally, 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 finally getting on with the Romulan Arc after taking a detour through Foundry missions that were far more interesting than the Romulan Arc. We are going to be continuing with Taurus this week. I'll also be talking more about Malrihan and the many positive aspects there are to it, as well as giving a general tour of Malrihan and its environs. Um. But that will be later. That will be later. That will probably be in a separate video. For now, we're going to be getting on with Taurus so we can get on with the Romulan Arc so we can get past the Romulan Arc because the Romulan Arc is fucking boring. All right. So, no rants. No rants this time. I've already had, like... <laughs> I've already put up a video rant. <laughs> You've seen two rants from me this week. Well, one rant from me and one rant from me and about three, three to four other people. So, yeah. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna go get Taurus! Taurus! Taurus, 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 Taurus. Last one we did was Friend of My Enemy. Jesus, Friend of My Enemy feels so... Friend of My Enemy feels like it was so long ago at this point. Wow. Wow. All right. All right. 
Taurus, the truth behind the destruction of the Romulus system may be the harbinger of threats to come. Except that it wasn't because the threat never came, because the storyline stopped after... <laughs> A light in the dark. Ow. Ow. Side, why you hurt? Anyways. Starfleet Command has dedicated significant resources to evaluating the evidence you found in the survey of Hobus system. Frankly, our conclusions are disturbing. Billions died when the supernova destroyed the Romulus homeworld. It, sh it should be Romulans. Romulans, not Romulus homeworld. Okay, unless you're referring to Romulus in, in the singular sense. Or, you know, destroyed Romulus and not destroyed the Romulus homeworld. Grammar. Grammar. If it was deliberate, it is beyond even the most depraved acts of the Dominion. We must find out who was responsible. Starfleet Intelligence has decoded subspace messages that were transmitted by the Hobus base. They were being sent to a planet in the neutral zone that is supposed to be abandoned. Obviously, something is there. Starfleet is authorizing you to enter the neutral zone and investigate this planet. If the person or persons responsible for the supernova are there, bring them back. They must stand trial for their crimes. It's telling us to go uh, that the Hobus Base is sending messages to head to the Iconia system in the Z6 sector of the, Ico of the Iota Pavonis sector block. And as a reward, you can get a lockbox. If you actually take that lockbox, I will hit you. Uh, you can also get shields, but these shields are pretty shit, actually. Uh, the, the, probably the best one among these is the, cap is the Capacity X2, uh, shield. And that will give you 318 shield capacity. It's nowhere near as much as the personal covariant shield you got from Preemptive Strike. So if you're really looking for a high capacity shield that you can use till the end of the game, Preemptive Strike is the place you want to get it. Um... Play it, get it for you, get it for all your buffs, and you'll have a really decent capacity shield that'll carry you through a long while. Uh, these, they're vendor trash. They're, they're, they're really not that great at all. So, Taurus. And of course, it did not make it primary. Don't know why. Sigh. Okay. Let's go to Taurus. Captain Starfleet Intelligence reports transmissions between the mining station we found in the Hobus system and this planet. Iconia is supposed to be abandoned, and any Romulan presence in this area of space is a cause for concern. Recommend we investigate further and look for links to the Hobus system. Sir, Riemann ships detected. We are being hailed. Federation ship. I am Commander Shanklado. I can't believe I got that right first time. I am Commander Shanklado of the Riemann starship in Traku. Your presence here is a violation of treaty and could be considered an act of war. Leave immediately or we will open fire. They're going to open fire anyways. So, let's go ahead and deal with them. You know, actually, really quick. Really super quick. Oh, that's why. That's why the music's too loud, because the music's too loud. There we go. There we go. Hi there. Goodbye. I don't need this, but whatever. I'll take it anyways.
Stop. Fuck it. I don't even notice plasma anymore. I don't notice plasma. It does nothing. <laughs> At all. So, uh... Let's see. So, we got this big crater here. Now, this big crater is the crater made... I, I think that's what they were going for. Is this giant-ass crater here is the one that was made at the end of Contagion, where uh, Captain Picard set the Iconian launch bay to blow up. And blow up any of the last vestiges of Iconian technology that were on that place. That's a little too... There we go. Um, obviously, he failed quite spectacularly also, since seeing as we are here, and as we will see, <laughs> as we will see, he failed quite spectacularly. He failed, yes. Uh, scan crater. You shot at me four times and missed me twice. You are not a threat, sir. Um... And their debuff is cleared by engineering team. So I missed out. I'm gonna I'm gonna look on the uh, I'm gonna look for the old. There it is, Captain. What was that? Starfleet has no records of a vessel matching these sensor readings. I can't even make a guess as to who built it. And why did it attack and then just vanish? That wasn't a cloaking device, sir. The ship is simply gone. It's almost as if it teleported away. Captain, we've completed our scans of the crater. Sensors are detecting Romulan and Riemann life signs, as well as one that we are unable to identify. We are also picking up signatures from the elements that we found at the Hobus base. So there's crap going on down there that we need to take a look at. The main concentration of these elements is in an underground facility of some type, but there are multiple levels of shielding. We will need to find the shield frequencies before we can transport a team down to the base. Sir, the Intraku is decloaked. It's firing disruptors. It's almost prescient. Alright. That was the old dialogue. So, uh, yeah. That was an I. I don't think I'm spoiling anything for anybody who's watching this when I say that's that was an Iconian ship and it absolutely failed at doing anything threatening. Congratulations. GG, sir. You were unable to significantly damage a 50-year-old starship design. Good going. Nice game. So, yeah, this is the IRW in Traku. It is the Riemann flagship we will be fighting for this uh, episode of Rise of the Red Shirt. And it is also hopelessly screwed. So let's go ahead and do this thing in so we can get to more interesting stuff. You were going to tractor me, so I shot you with my graviton beam. I hope you enjoyed it, sir. You tractored me anyways. Don't tractor me, bro. Also, fuck your plasma torpedoes. Oh, my inventory's full. No cell! No cell! God is my witness. He is broken in half. So let me go ahead and throw this vendor trash where it belongs. Uh, let's see. Get rid of the triple. Let's see. What do you do? Uh, plus 1.5 all damage. <laughs> yeah, screw that. Get rid of that triple. Probably drank something I would have liked to. Drink some Chateau Picard that I would have liked to enjoy. Stupid tribbles. Actually, that probably would have been my fleet triple. That thing's all. That thing's more trouble than it's worth. This stupid fleet triple. It only gives you like one fleet mark an hour, and it eats all of your damn food. So not worth triple testing for that piece of crap. Ah, uh, all right. Where am I at? My assets. Oh, my assets are fine. Yes. Yes, my assets are fine. My assets are fine. Oh, whatever. I don't even know where I'm going with that. Scanners are picking up one life sign in an escape pod, but the pod is heavily damaged. It will not survive atmospheric re-entry. 
Captain, I believe the occupant of this pod is Commander Shinclado. We have a transporter lock and can beam him aboard at your command. The commander wasn't too pleased about accepting our assistance, Captain. However, he may be able to help us in return. Shinclado has agreed to give us the frequency of the base's outermost shield layer. That will allow us to transport an away team onto the base. Why did he fucking give us this? Scans indicate that each floor of the base has its own shield generator, though, so we'll need to find a way through them once we're inside. Are you ready to beam down? Well, considering I'm the captain of the ship, why not? Why not beam down to the hazardous environment? It's not like I've been doing it the whole stupid game. Why is the captain going down at all? All right, so there have been a couple changes to the equipment loadout since I think I've already pointed out that 8 is now rocking the uh, the Borg maintenance drone prosthetic. Doppler is now equipped with a full Mako set, as is Rick here. Uh, I equipped Rick with the full Mako set to make him more survivable uh, during the new Romulus missions because the enemies on Mul Rehan have been buffed significantly. Uh, they will ruin your stuff, especially the Herogen who have this thing, have, who can, who, who have a Cardassian ability, I believe. It's a Cardassian ability. It's a Cardassian power, and it's a, the holographic generator. It makes more sense that the Herogen are using it than the Cardassians, because there was an entire episode of Voyager revolving around the uh, Voyager giving them holographic technology. Thanks, by the way, Janeway, because what the Herogen will do is they'll put a holographic generator down and make two alphas. Or more. You take out, and the moment you take out that stupid generator, put another one down. It's like they have almost no cooldown for that at all. It's such a rage quit. Not to matter, like the, the the enemy placement in those missions is really suspect too, because they, they they basically put like a big, like especially in the first in the tier one rep mission on Malrihan, like the, there's like. Uh, there's like this enemy glob on the map in like the center of the map that you have to get past and it's like a dozen or a dozen probably more uh, of really uh, strong enemies that you have to get past and they will mob the shit out of you it's more than a dozen has to be um well, they just zerg rush you, and the the enemy placement of those missions is really suspect. Um, so that's why I've given uh, Rick the full Mako set as well. I think Doppler already had the full Mako set, but I'm not sure. Last time I recorded, uh, but now Rick has it too. Mark Eleven Mako, mind you, uh, not like twelve, but yeah, because it's yeah yeah. Uh, it's bad. It's 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 painful. Mulrehan is the missions in Mulrehan are pain. Okay, let's go ahead and go down. We're going downtown. I'm drinking coffee. Captain, this area was originally part of the Iconian main city, which was destroyed by orbital bombardment more than two hundred thousand years ago. Based on the energy signatures and life signs present on our sensors, I believe it's been taken over by the Remans. I recommend we attempt to access their computers and learn more. Alright. So here we have... Stuff. Apparently spiders survived on the surface of the ruined planet. Or just underneath it. I guess it's not so ruined then, is it? So here we have, like, circuits and stuff. I didn't know the Iconians would have used circuits. I, I would have thought they used, like, optical devices of some sort. How did you get in here? Hi. That was unnecessary, Lima. So yeah, I've given Lima the Triolic Pattern Enhancer to uh, help her survive on Mulrihan. Because she's sort of my dedicated healer, and so she always has to stick around. Stick around. 
It's kind of strange that I'm accessing a Rom uh, a Iconian database, considering the last time somebody accessed an Iconian database, the they made the decision to destroy the damn tricorder they used to access it. There are logs here of shipments to and from the base in the Hobus system, as well as schematics for a device that may be what was used to seed the Hobus star and cause the supernova that destroyed Romulus. According to these files, there are stores of tekasite, decalithium, and protomatter on this level. Those, those are the same elements we found in the Hobus system. Captain, we should collect samples as evidence before we proceed to the lower levels. So, uh... Some damn dirty Romulans doing some damn dirty things. Bad people doing bad shit on Iconia. So, yeah, basically the implication is that the destruction of Romulus was murder. Murder most foul. And, uh, and so far, it's... The the uh, the uh, the implication is that the Remans are the ones who did it, but uh, I'm gonna use this. Of course, it's not gonna show it. Where's the fire? Where's the freaking stupid? Put it there. There we go. Fire suppression device comes in handy when you're fi fighting guys with lots of plasma weapons and plasma grenades. Oh hi. Oh hi there. Oh hi. What's up with you? That is, if they live long enough to use them on you. That wasn't it. It's probably one of these. These look important. Okay, that contained techocyte. So now that I have obtained tech... Oh, nobody's gonna get a tech war joke. Pretty sure this is new music. I say new with massive sarcasm quotes because they ported a ton of Champions music into this game. Hey, Robin Hood. Over here. Over here. That's got Decalithium. That's got Proto Matter. Useful if you're a man named David Marcus. Nobody's going to get that joke either. Captain, I believe we found all the evidence available on this level. We should move on. Alright. Lower the force field. So yeah, I had to give Hunter the Mako set because the man was made of glass. Let's see, recommend we find an accessible terminal on this level and look for more information. Okay. He was basically made of glass on Malrihan. He kept dying. He was like the first to take a dive. So I had to get him some better armor and equipment, and I had, like, a spare set of Mark 11 Mako stuff sitting in my bank, so I figured may as well. You missed. You, you, I, I was talking about making you better with Mako stuff, and you missed. You shame your family. Whatever. Go away, Dark Shadow Guard Elite. Shoe fly don't bother me. No, not that. Damn, this thing hurts. Oh, here's a new another terminal. 
Here's more information. Captain, we found the evidence we need. There are logs here. Copies of orders and personal communications. It appears that someone named Commander Aranhu was responsible for launching the explosive into the Hobus Star. But he did it on the orders of Praetor Taurus. Taurus was the one who was behind the bases. She provided the schematics for the device and even ordered the Remans to attack Romulan mining ships to keep them away from Hobus before the supernova. This is a little bit of judicious retrofitting of part of Countdown. Um, there is a... There, in Countdown, by the way, naming your comic book tie-in Countdown, that's really smart. Uh, they... There were the, uh, the Narada... Before this is before it's like a like a lo like Lovecraft's wet dream you know starship, uh, you know this is before it has spikes. It's like this boring mining ship to start off with, and uh, it, the Narada is like carrying Spock to Vulcan, and it's besieged by out of nowhere. They just show up. They're never explained. It's like Reman pirates, <laughs> like out of like bat people out of nowhere. You know, they just board the Narada and they start kicking the crap out of the crew. Then the Enterprise shows up and it's never spoken of again. So this looks. This sounds like like retrofitting of that. Like okay. Here's who these guys were who just randomly showed up, and here's why. And that's not all. There are recorded transmissions here between Taurus and a race she calls her Dread Masters. Was the destruction of Romulus part of some larger plan? Signs point to... Yes! I had to check the 8-ball really quick. Sir, according to these records, there is a working Iconian gateway in the lowest level of the base. With that, Taurus could go anywhere. The amount of chaos she could spread is unthinkable. We must find the controls for the force fields and get to the gateway. Gotta get the gateway getting before we get to the gateway. That makes zero sense. I don't care. Guard Elite! Hey, how you doing? Here's a shotgun. I didn't knock... I didn't knock the guard elite down, but I knocked down the guy across the room from him. Stop that. Stop that. Stop that. Okay. He stopped. That's... <laughs> he stopped. He's like, huh? Oh, the AI in this game. All right. Spiders. Okay, let's see. There's some kind of force field. There should be a control panel somewhere nearby that will disable this force field. <laughs> Sorry. Captain Obvious's useless suggestions! <laughs> Maybe not. There's some kind of force field here. Maybe we should go look for the thing that turns it off? Maybe not. The force field's been disabled. Okay, that is kind of obvious. Well, no, we're not in the same room, so fine. Fair enough. Sir, there's a message being fed into this computer terminal. It's coming from somewhere in the facility. I am Taurus, praiser of the Romulan Star Empire. I don't know who you are or why you're here, but that is of no consequence. Any knowledge that you have of me or my plans will never leave this place. I give you a moment to make your peace with death. Huh. Ooh, duty officer missions are done. Oh, hi there. Oh, hi there. Oh, hi there. Have a shotgun. This uh, this uh, this damn shotgun is almost unfair. Oops. 
So basically, we're 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 just gonna have to survive like a wave, wave after wave after wave after wave after wave after wave of these guys before we can go down that elevator. Um, excuse me. Thank you. And they're dead. And they're gonna stay dead. But more people are gonna beam in. Then they're gonna die. Because they have no idea who or what the hell is waiting for them when they beam in. It may actually take a while to beam in, too. Or not. Hi there! Do you set me on fire again? Not that I care. Because fire is worthless now. Plasma is worthless. There actually are a lot of lots of plasma weapons um, in the uh, in the uh, Romulan rep tiers that you can unlock to purchase. But there are no. There is supposedly going to be like some kind of console that you get unlocked through Romulan rep that would really jazz up plasma weapons. I'm unsure if it's a mission reward or if it is available in the store because I don't see anything available in the store. Uh, when I look at the Romulan rep stuff. There is a console, but it's kind of worthless unless you, like, use... Well, actually, I'll show you. I'll show you guys what it is. But it's not the console that they were talking about. It's not the console that jazzes up plasma weapons significantly. The first time you go through this area, it can be really BS because of, uh just how tough these guys can be when you're low level. But uh, here, it's just a slobber knocker. They are not, they stand no chance whatsoever. So now you think you know everything. Impressive, but ultimately pointless. Admiral, it is my pleasure to introduce you to Commander Aranhu. He will ensure that you never tell anyone about what you found here. Excuse me, I'm petting my treble. All right, con continue. So, Commander Aranhu. Where's Aranhu? Where's Aranhu? Oh, there he is. Hi. 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 Ow. That wasn't nice. Have a shotgun blast. 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 I'm not going anywhere. Have a shotgun blast. There we go. I forgot that they gave bosses, like, the power to physically punt your character 50 feet away. I wish I had something like that. Wait, I think there is something like that in rep, but it's kind of stupid compared to the alternative. I'll look for it later. We now have access to the lowest level, Captain. The gateway is on that level, sir. It's possible that Taurus has already escaped. We need to hurry. No, I was going to do my nails. You know, get some nail clippers out. Maybe get a brush. Clean inside, clean underneath them, you know. Little, a little bit of personal maintenance for going down, Rick. It's all right. This is the lowest level of the facility, Captain. If Taurus is still here, we need to find her near the Iconian Gateway. Repetitive dialogue is repetitive. Uh, hi. That <laughs> one guy just stood there. Holy crap. Owie. This shotgun's almost unfair. Almost. Almost. That's what I was about to... Okay, good. <laughs> Just like, where the hell is everybody? Okay, so we're going to play this strategically, because if you go in there, you will get massacred. So I'm going to go in here, I'm going to piss somebody off, and then I'm going to run back here, and we're going to slaughter them. Hi. Bye! Don't fire until you see the whites of their eyes! That's a wall, people. They're right over there. There's more of them coming. I think. 
Um, maybe? I, I see some moving. Yeah, here they come. Hoo-ha! Hey, you stupid bastard! There we go. <laughs> Hi. All them over there. Hi! You're almost dead. Oh shit. Oh shit. Hey guys, they're coming. Hi! That's Brader Taurus. Air canceling here. Must reach the gate. I know, see a gate. Captain Tars is has been incapacitated. No shit, Sherlock. We should tell. <laughs> we should transport her to the brig on the Waglinde. She has a great many crimes to answer for. All right, beam Tars out. This gateway is active. It is far too powerful for us to leave it for anyone else to find. Starfleet records show that Ambassador Picard and Captain Sisko encountered Iconian gateways, and both chose to destroy them. We should do the same. The gate controls are in this room. If we can rig a tricorder to send a gravimetric pulse through the controls when the gateway is open, that should cause the gateway's power supply to overload, causing a catastrophic cascade failure. We won't have a lot of time before the gateway is destroyed, sir. We should set up the gravimetric pulse and then leave. Alrighty. Sounds like a plan. Hello, gate searcher. Sir, searcher. Searcher key? Hello, gate searcher key. I'ma overload you! The gateway is rigged to explode. We should return to the ship immediately. No, what? What? Oh, wait. Oh, yeah, beam up. All right, let's go. Let's get the hell out of Dodge. Sir, we're being hailed by the Romulans. Putting them on screen now. Starfleet in the neutral zone. Killing Remans and destroying Romulan property? There is no explanation that you could offer that would explain this unprovoked attack on our empire. My empress will reward me when I offer her your heads. And they send one more guy. Oh, three patrols. Well, that's something. All right. Well, that's better than nothing. Time to die. Oh, hi, Plasma. Bye, Plasma. There's always room for ping. All right. Oh, they sent another Mogai. We know you blew the last one up, but we're really, 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 really sure this one's going to kill you.
Huh? You like that? You like my useless ass graviton beam? Oh, my inventory's full. Must get auxiliary battery. So, two more guys. What's next? Birds of prey. I feel like sitting down whoever the commander of this Romulan fleet is that I'm engaging. I would leave if the mission didn't force me to kill these people. Really? Ah, <laughs> oh, cryptic and your crappy hardware. Captain, we can leave the neutral zone safely if we depart now. If we linger, we are likely to encounter Romulan reinforcements. I seem to recall the Waglinde taking on an entire Romulan fleet not too long ago damn near single-handedly. So, if they want to send more Mogais and birds of prey, by all means. <laughs> if you want a tango, if, if you want to dance, we can dance. Personally, I would rather have left the system than fought those guys, though. Cryptic, though, seems to believe that uh, Star Trek means killing means killing a lot of people, means killing metric fuck tons of people. I'm pretty sure in this mission alone I just killed maybe at least a few thousand people. At least. Let that stir in your noodle for a moment. And I'm one of the, and I'm one of the good guys, I say that with sarcasm quotes. Let's depart the system before somebody else throws up to be put on the chopping block. That was Taurus. I have to turn it in. That's right, I have to turn it in now. I have to turn things in. I've forgotten how to play normal mission because I've been having too much fun playing better ones. Taurus is being held in an undisclosed location. It'll get disclosed later. It will take some time before we can fully question her if she is even willing to speak to us at all. I fear that she will keep her secrets locked inside her heart until it is too late. What does Tanae... Locked inside her heart. Is this something you want to... Never mind. It's not my business, Admiral. However, you have solved one of the greatest mysteries of the past 40 years, Admiral. We now know who is responsible for the destruction of the Romulan homeworld and she will pay for her crimes. Starfleet will be working with Empress Sela, and her trial will proceed with the cooperation and support of the Romulans. Perhaps this can open a door that will lead to renewed relations between our peoples, or at least it would have if I hadn't had to murder thousands of Romulans and Remans in order to get there, including a Romulan patrol that was simply there doing its job. Anyways, there is one thing I find curious, though. The unknown ship that attacked the Waglinde. Do you think they were the Dark Masters that Taurus claims to serve? <laughs> Unsure what to say! 
Taurus's Dark Masters need to have some Top Gun training. So we're gonna claim uh, we're gonna claim the Capex too. Inventory's full. So I can't claim it. So I have to open this hole in my inventory. Then I have to go in here. Then I have to claim the CapX2. Then I'll claim the CapX2. I've claimed the CapX2. And then I will throw it away. Because that is all that CapX2 is good for, really. It's vendor trash. Don't... Just, just, just don't bother with it. It's not, it's not a good piece of equipment at all. Go get the personal covariant shield from Preemptive Strike if you want a really good high-capacity shield on your first uh, jaunt through the game. That one will do you fine. It's a good shield. I, I used it for the longest time. I, t I went into it... I went into, like, elite STFs with it and stuff. It's, it's good. It's good. It's a good shield. Uh... Do a, just doing a little bit of inventory maintenance. That was Taurus. Uh, it resolves the whole um, the whole debacle surrounding how exactly Romulus went down. Congratulations, Lieutenant. Uh, uh, you know how, what happened to Romulus? Luxana. You you misspelled Luxana, by the way. Whoever you are. Also, you're a human, and, uh, you're blonde. Well, looks on a choice hair color did change uh, every once in a while, so that's not too bad. But, yeah, it should be, like, if you want to be, like, looks on it, you should be Betazoid. Ah! Oh, there's an Azura. So, yeah, that was Taurus. It resolves the, uh, it basically explains nothing. It explains nothing. It doesn't. It doesn't. It, it doesn't really explain. It basically, it, it basically just says, you know, subspace weapons. Subspace weapons blew up Taurus because we have no way to actually explain what the hell happened because it's so brain dead stupid. It's it. it, it there, there's no way. There, how do you make sense out of that? What do you do? To make sense out of that that whole JJ plot about a supernova blowing up Romulus, supernovas do not work that way at all. Can I open my o Omega conversion crate yet? Can I open it? No. Let's see, use. No, that's next week. Next week's patch, probably, probably, most likely, possibly. Um, da, 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 da. let's go ahead and open the somebody summon the Azura, so I'm going to go ahead and somebody has crashed into my ship because they don't know how to drive. That's okay. My ship has a phase shifter thingy, so it didn't do any damage, and I'm going to go ahead and exchange something. So that was Taurus. Um, it's an alright mission. Yeah, there's there's certain there's certainly uh, buggier ones. The first time through that mission without any really good great equipment is going to be a bear for everyone. It was a bear for me when I was first playing. I I was pissed off. Uh, I got I got pissed because of the gauntlet and these guys were way tougher than than I was than I could be equipped to fight at that point. Uh, but uh, now pretty much pushovers. So yeah, just go and when you be aware that when the, if it's the first time you're playing, uh, that gauntlet's going to hurt. So be aware of that. Understand the gauntlet's going to be painful. So uh, you may you may want to do things differently. I I ran in there and mixed it up, but you may want to do things a little differently when you go, run through Taurus. You may want to play it a little bit safer in that gauntlet part. So uh, you may want to play that gauntlet part uh, a lot more like the way I played the final room. The way I do that last room, uh, you know that last room you don't want to go running in. You know you don't want to get just like run in half cock get shot in the ass. You know. Don't go in that room. Don't ju just bolt in that room. Play it safe. Uh, that is, unless you're like the Terminator and you can survive at anything, in which case, fine. Feel free. But that was Rise of the Red Shirt. That was Taurus. And uh, we will return next week with Trapped, I believe. Trapped is a good mission. It's the first time in the game that I actually really, 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 really liked 
a mission. Not because that mission was good, mind you. Trapped was pretty painful on my PC because of the massive amounts of CPU the map chews up uh, when you combine the UI that's being rendered by the CPU and the constantly animated backgrounds that, well, it just didn't run very well. Uh, but the, something happens, and it marks for and it marked for me probably one of the first times in the game that the developers actually started doing something interesting with the engine. So Trapped is not a very good mission, but it's still got a nice it's got it's got a place right here, you know, as as like one of the first times the developers actually tried having fun in some capacity with the game's engine. So uh, we will resume with Trapped next week, and I will see you guys later. So later. Preparing to fire lance weapons!